Have you ever wanted to make comic books with stable diffusion? What if you're a parent who has a whole bunch of kids and you don't have the time to sit there for hours on end drawing a background to make sure that it's perspectively accurate? I've been an artist pretty much my entire life, but there's one thing that I hated about being a comic book artist is the patience. Being able to sit there for hours on end drawing the same thing over and over again, it would drive me crazy. Well, I'm gonna show you how to use stable diffusion to tell the stories that you've always wanted to tell in comic book form. Now it's easy to get started with Stable Diffusion. I've got an installation video that you can find in the description down below. But aside from that, we're going to be using the SDXL Style Selector and After Detailer. You can go into the Extensions tab and the Available, it should be there. But if it isn't, I'll leave the link for it in the description down below. So you can copy that and paste it into the Install from URL. What I'm going to show you is how to create the images required to train your own Laura model on a specific character. But more on that later. When it comes to trying to create a comic book in Stable Diffusion, the one issue that we're always going to have is a consistent character. And we've touched base on this in this video in the past, but that was more for a realistic character. For a comic book character, we have the issue of the costume, which is a bit, a bit of an issue because we want it to be consistent through the entire thing. Now the good thing is with a comic book and also with cartoons, the wardrobe tends to be very limited. You kind of have Clark Kent either wearing a suit and tie or you have him in the Superman outfit. You don't really have him being a fashionista going from look to look to look to look. Now obviously if you have Lois Lane you may have a couple different looks but for a specific let's say one comic book it's a good chance you're going to have her wearing the exact same thing through the entire comic book. This is great for us because it means that if we train a character with one specific look, let's say a superhero outfit or even something as simple as a pair of jeans and a t-shirt, as in this case, Stable Diffusion will have no choice but to actually draw the character with that look. Now in the past, when we wanted to create a specific character, we would have prompts that look like this. Now that is ridiculous. We're not doing that anymore because we're working with SDXL. The majority of these new models that are coming for SDXL actually work a lot better with shorter prompts, more precise prompts. You just tell it exactly what you see in the picture. For instance, you would take something like this and bring it down to this. It's much simpler. So you don't have to constantly be creating paragraphs and paragraphs of description. Have you learned anything so far? Click like and subscribe, that'd be great. Now the reason why we need SDXL Style Selector is so we can kind of direct it a little bit more towards what we want. It's gonna make things a little bit easier. After Detail is great because what it'll do is it'll in-paint the faces on its own no matter how many characters you have in the scene. So. What I want to do now is I want to create a female character with blonde hair, going to be wearing leggings and a tank top, and she's going to be running through New York. As you can see, I've selected a name from the random name generator. That's exactly what we did in the last one when we were trying to get consistent faces. You're going to find the link to that in the description. As for the other settings, here's a list of the other settings and what I like to use. You are not restricted to these settings. For instance, the sample method, you can use whichever one you like. There's actually quite a few that I like to use. The next thing we'll do is go to After Detailer, activate that, leave everything else as it is. So now we can generate the image. All right, I love it, it's perfect. So you see, we kept it nice and simple and it gave us the exact image that I was looking for. One thing to keep in mind, if you tell Stable Diffusion to put your character in a section of, let's say, New York, most of the images that it's been trained on has a lot of pedestrians in New York. So what's gonna happen? You're gonna have a lot of pedestrians in the background. If you've told Stable Diffusion to put a specific look to that character that you want in front and center, it may spill over into those characters as well. And you'll see that certain characters in the background will be dressed exactly like your character. You may have to in-paint those out later. That's fine, that's easy. We can do that. Okay, so now we've got the image that we want, but we're not settled down on a seed, which is fine, because what we want is we want to generate a whole bunch of these. One thing to keep in mind, when it comes to buildings, they're not the greatest things to actually generate with stable diffusion. There's quite a few lines, and there's a lot of perspective to keep in mind. It tends to struggle, like the windows tend to get a little bit warpy. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Because we haven't locked off the seed, it's going to randomly generate a whole bunch of images. So we'll click generate and see what happens. Hey, 
as you can see with all of these, the face looks exactly the same on all of them. That's the benefit of using a specific character name as opposed to just saying one woman. If you say one woman, one man, it's just gonna randomize it. You, everything's gonna look completely different in every single picture. We've got all the images we need for this data set. Now the thing is, in some of them, it doesn't look like the same character. For instance, the pants might look a little bit different. This is where it helps if you have a little bit of artistic skill, but it's not that necessary. You can use in painting and kind of, you know, work your way through it. Sometimes in painting might not help you, so knowing how to use Photoshop and how to draw a little bit is definitely gonna be a key here. I'm gonna throw this into a photo editor and alter it just a bit. I don't have to go into crazy detail with this. I'm not drawing this thing from scratch. All I'll need to do is draw the line and then change it up a little bit. Make sure that I kind of go with the lights and shadows of it. It doesn't have to look perfect. It's good to actually use the clone stamp when you're using Photoshop. That way you can kind of get the same style with what you're changing around. I'm gonna save that out. Now I'll bring it back into Stable Diffusions in Paint and I'll select Mask Only. I'll draw over the section that I want and click Generate. Depending on your denoise number, it'll keep the exact same image I would keep this around 0.5 if you're trying to integrate something a little bit better. Sometimes it's easier just to use Photoshop or some sort of photo editor like Krita or PhotoP even than actually going back into Stable Diffusion. We're actually building the photos required to train a model. So they need to be the same in every single image. If you have something that looks a little bit different, it's going to start getting confused. It'll give you results you don't really want in the final model. If you're gonna be creating superhero suit with an emblem on the chest, I would suggest that you actually put those in in Photoshop. And then that way you can use the warp tool to kind of move it around and put it on the chest and try and fix the lighting to match what it is that you've got in the image. That way you know that from image to image it's gonna look exactly the same. And then we can send that into in painting, put the denoise into 0.5 and just paint over the logo. You'll see that it actually embeds it perfectly into the image. You didn't have to worry about going through like, you know, 50 different images just to find two logos that match. Because if you try and do it straight out of Stable Diffusion, they're not gonna come out good. You're gonna get logos that look insanely different from picture to picture. It's actually just easier to create an image in Photoshop. It's gonna match every single time because you've done it with Photoshop, perfect. That way when we train our model, the actual logo is gonna look exactly the same as if you had a Superman logo because you know the Superman logo looks exactly the same every single time you try and generate with Stable Diffusion. Or in this case, you're gonna have your own logo pre-trained into the model and that way it'll be perfect every single time. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to take this data set that we've created today and turn it into a LoRa file using Koi SS and possibly some online options if you don't have a GPU that can support it. If you guys have any other questions, let me know in the comments down below. If you liked the video, click like, subscribe, and also check out this other one.